Hi guys, Olive here, here today to show you my nonfiction November TBR, and I'm going to give you some book recommendations for each of our four challenges. If you missed my announcement video for nonfiction November, I will link that for you in the description box below. I'll also throw it up in the cards. Be sure to watch that video if you want all the details about this event. But the short version is that nonfiction November is a month long reading initiative, during which you're encouraged to read a little bit more nonfiction than you ordinarily would. Now, the only requirement for participation in Nonfiction November is that you read at least one nonfiction book during the month. However, I do always present you with some extra challenges in case you're looking to challenge yourself or if you're just looking to have some extra fun. Each year for Nonfiction November, I choose four broad one word challenges that you can use to select the books you want to read for Nonfiction November. You can do some of them, you can do all of them, you can mix and match them, or if you don't like them, you can ignore them entirely. It is completely up to you. But for Nonfiction November 2022, our four challenge words are record, element, border, and secret. In this video, I am going to go challenge by challenge. I am going to give you some possible interpretations, my interpretations of these four words. I will suggest some types of books that you could pick up for each of these challenges. And then I am going to recommend you some books that I think would fit all of these challenges based on my interpretations. And then finally, I will show you what books I am planning on reading to satisfy those four prompts. Let's start at the top with the word record. Now you could choose to interpret this word in a legal sense, which might take you down the avenue of true crime if that is a subgenre that interests you. But record could also mean on the record, meaning you could pick a nonfiction book that was written by a journalist, or the nonfiction book could even be about journalism. You can define a record as a specific recording of a song, so music books count, but also you could look at the word record and see someone setting a record. So then sports books could come into play. But really, you could also interpret this challenge very broadly. And you could count really any work of history or even memoir toward this challenge, because those books are written accounts of things that have happened in the past. Therefore, they are records. Those are just some examples of how you could possibly interpret the record challenge. But keep in mind, those are just my takes. Please feel free to interpret this challenge word and the remaining three however you choose. But based on my definitions of the word record that I just shared, I do have two different books that I would like to recommend. And the first book is one that I read and reviewed very recently. And ever since I have wanted to put this book in the hands of every single music lover I know, that book is called This Is What It Sounds Like, What the Music You Love Says About You you by Susan Rogers and Augie August. This book is by a music producer turned PhD and her neuroscientist co-writer. And in this book, they break down different elements of music, helping you as the reader discover what your individualized formula for a favorite song or a favorite record truly is. This book is so interactive. You're directed to listen to a bunch of songs as you go along, and that's a ton of fun. This book will make you hear your own playlists in a whole different way, and it will make you understand yourself as a music listener completely differently. I loved this book. I highly recommend it. If you're interested in hearing a little bit more about it, I did review it here on my channel. So I'll link that video for you in the description box below and up in the cards. But my other recommendation for the record challenge is a book called Little Wonder, the Fabulous Story of Lottie Dodd, the World's First Female Sports Superstar by Sasha Abramsky. This book is about Lottie Dodd, who was a Victorian era, multi-talented athlete to say the least. She was a championship golfer. She was an Olympic silver medalist in archery. She ice skated. She played hockey. She climbed mountains. All of that, plus she was good enough at tennis to win Wimbledon five times. The first time when she was only 15 years old. In fact, she still holds the record for the youngest ladies singles champion. She was the most impressive sportswoman 
you likely have never heard of. And this was a really fun read. Since I review sports books for the Christian Science Monitor, I am always trying on this channel to get people to consider picking up sports books because I know how great they are. And this could be a good place to start with sports books. My TBR selection for this challenge uses the journalism on the record interpretation that I mentioned earlier. So I plan on reading Newsroom Confidential, Lessons and Worries from an Ink Stand Life by Margaret Sullivan. And this is a memoir about the author's long career in journalism. She was actually selected to be the first female public editor of the New York Times in 2012. And just in case you didn't know, a public editor is essentially the person who's put in charge of overseeing the ethics of a publication. I write freelance book reviews for some newspapers currently. I was also the editor of my high school newspaper. I did some work for my local paper when I was a teenager. I went into college originally as a communications major, thinking that I would eventually end up working in journalism. So suffice it to say, this is a topic that very much interests me, and I'm excited to read her story. But now onto the second challenge, which is element. You could obviously take this one down a scientific path, but you could also pick a book on the weather or climate change. You could choose to pick a book within a subgenre that is very much in your element, meaning your comfort zone. But then again, you could look at that the opposite way and you could pick a book that has you out of your element, a book that's outside of your comfort zone. In my eyes, element could also mean a nonfiction book that's composed of many elements. So that could be an essay collection, a graphic memoir, or even an experimental nonfiction book. So for the most obvious recommendation, I suggest The Disappearing Spoon and Other True Tales of Madness, Love, and the History of the World from the Periodic Table of the Elements by Sam Keen. Very long title. This is a book in which the very popular nonfiction writer tells stories of the periodic table and all the elements. But a book that's composed of many elements that I really enjoyed is a book called On Animals by Susan Orlean. This is a collection of previously published pieces. They are mainly from The New Yorker, but all of them are about animals. In this book, you'll meet a pampered show dog, urban chickens, ferocious lions, and some surprisingly lovable mules, amongst other creatures. Susan Orlean's wit and her storytelling capabilities are just unmatched. I thought this was a great collection. I actually reviewed it for the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette. I'll link that review for you in the description box below if you want to hear a little bit more about it. My choice for the element prompt is going to be The Milky Way, an auto biography of our galaxy by Moya McTeer. This is a book by an astrophysicist. And apparently in this book, she attempts to tell the story of our galaxy, which is full of many life-giving elements. But she's trying to tell the story of our galaxy as though the Milky Way is attempting to speak for itself. I found that to be a very intriguing concept. And frankly, any book about space is something that pushes me outside of my comfort zone. So it fits the element prompt for me in that way as well. <laughs> the next challenge I'm going to talk about is border. And some examples of how you could possibly interpret this word could be a nonfiction book about international relations, a memoir about an immigrant experience, a translated nonfiction book, a nonfiction book that crosses a border. You could also pick up a nonfiction book about art, crafting, or interior design. Border could mean a self-help book about helping you set appropriate boundaries with the people in your life. Or border could even mean a nonfiction book that you bought at Borders before they went out of business, of course. My first recommendation for this challenge is, of course, going to be Borderland, A Journey Through the History of Ukraine by Anna Reed. You may or may not know this, but the name Ukraine actually means on the border or borderland, hence the title of this book. If you are interested in learning more about Ukraine, if maybe you picked up some books toward the beginning of this year looking to learn more, maybe you haven't had a chance to get to those yet, or if you want to learn more about the region now, Nonfiction November is a great time to do that. Now, when it comes to a translated work of nonfiction, one that I really enjoyed and can recommend is a book called Adventures in Memory, The Science and Secrets of Remembering and Forgetting 
Awakening by Hilda and Ilva Ostby. The authors of this book are sisters. One is a neuroscientist, the other one is a novelist, and they combined forces to write this really compelling book on memory. In this book, they discuss notable cases and what those have taught scientists about memory, but they also talk about how remarkable even just an average memory is and how our brains go about converting short-term memories, also known as the working memory, to long-term memories. This book is fascinating. It is definitely worth a read. My TBR pick for the Border Challenge is going to be like, comment, subscribe. Inside YouTube's Chaotic Rise to World Domination by Mark Bergen. The reason why I chose this one for the Border Challenge is that YouTube is an international platform that has completely expanded the way that we can connect with one another online. And it just so happens to have also completely expanded the boundaries of my own life. This book is about the creation, the ascent, and the scandals of YouTube. I was actually a very early joiner of YouTube. So between everything I saw way back when and my own personal experience as a creator on this platform over the past nearly eight years, I imagine a lot of this will ring familiar. But now on to the last of the four prompts, and that's the word secret. This is a word you will see a lot of in nonfiction book titles and subtitles. I think publishers sometimes try to make books seem a little bit more interesting by introducing some colorful language like this. I think in their eyes, the word secret is like that dash of nutmeg in the white sauce. They're trying to add a little bit of an extra something. This prompt is probably the most straightforward of all four. You are of course welcome to pick a nonfiction book that has the word secret in the title or subtitle subtitle. There are so many to choose from, but you could also pick a nonfiction book about a secret, something kept hidden, or you could even pick a nonfiction book that you consider to be a guilty pleasure. One nonfiction book that has the word secret in the subtitle that I can personally recommend is a book called Smarter, Faster, Better, The Secrets of Being Productive in Life and Business by Charles Duhigg. This is by the author of The Power of Habit, which is a nonfiction book that I recommend to pretty much much everyone. I really enjoyed that book and I think it could appeal to basically anyone. This book was his follow-up to The Power of Habit and in it he does a very similar thing to what he did in The Power of Habit. It's just that his topic, his focus is slightly different. In this book he looks at productivity and he tells stories that demonstrate different aspects of human psychology and he does that with the hope that we can learn something about our brains, the way our brains process information so that we can work with them instead of against them and therefore become more efficient in our lives and at our jobs. I really like Charles Duhigg's books. I find them to be very approachable. He is teaching you by telling you stories, which I think any teacher out there will tell you is a highly effective method to teach someone something, only in his case, he's telling us real stories, which I think makes them pack an even mightier punch. I think this book is very effective. It's very fun, very approachable. I think this could be a great place to start for nonfiction beginners. But my other recommendation for the secret challenge has to do with some actual secrets. I suggest reading Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. This book tells the story of a family in which six out of their 10 children were diagnosed with schizophrenia. This happened during a time when the illness was far less well understood, it was far less well treated, and it was way more stigmatized. So this family had to keep secrets almost out of necessity. This book is equal parts fascinating and devastating. I actually reviewed it here on my channel close to its release date. I'll link that video for you in the description box below and up in the cards if you want to hear more about it. But then finally, my TBR pick for the secret challenge is going to be Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow. This is journalist Ronan Farrow's account of chasing the story of the many accusations against movie producer Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein went to a whole lot of trouble, we'll say, to try to keep his secret, to try to control this story, to try to keep Ronan Farrow quiet. And well, it didn't work. 
I have heard this book talked about everywhere. I have read one other book on this topic. It's a book called She Said. I read that book a couple of years ago. I'm curious to see how the two of these compare, but I'm excited to finally be picking this one up because I feel like I'm the last person to read it. So there you have it. Those are my TBR picks, as well as a couple of different recommendations for each of our four challenges. But again, just as a reminder, you don't need to interpret these words in the way that I did. You don't need to do all four challenges. You don't need to do any of the challenges if you don't want to. The only requirement to be a participant is to read just that one nonfiction book during November. Beyond that, please feel free to customize this event to whatever works for you and your schedule. To get ready for nonfiction November, please be sure to follow us everywhere on social media. There is an Instagram and a TikTok. Both of them are at nonfiction November. There's a Twitter page at nonfic November. There's a Goodreads group and a story graph challenge. If you want to track your reading for nonfiction November, if you're planning on doing these challenges and also brand new this year, come and join my circle over on the Threadable app where we will be diving into some different nonfiction books. Meet me in the margins and come talk nonfiction books with me. Let me know down in the comment section below what you are planning on reading for nonfiction November. Did any of the books I mentioned today seem good or do you have other plans? If you're a booktuber, a book blogger, a bookstagrammer, if you talk about books anywhere on the internet and you've posted your TBR, please give me a heads up. I love going to check those out. And if you have any more general comments or questions about this event or anything else, you can put those down below as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're looking forward to Nonfiction November as much as I am, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.